Hello, everyone, and welcome to the show. Coming up this week, we are going to talk about frequently asked questions on renting DVC points. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of the DVC Show, coming to you from the Bob Varley Studio in Orlando, Florida, which is about to undergo a change again. Uh, I'm your host, Pete Werner, joined uh, in the studio this week by my good friends, realtor and co-owner of MovingToOrlando.com, Mr. Sean Falk. Hi. Our producer, Mr. Corey Fiascanaro. Welcome home. And joining us via the interwebs, senior editor of DVCFan.com, Mr. Paul Krieger. Hey, everybody. And brand ambassador for DVCRentalStore.com, the lovely Carrie McPherson. I am so happy to be here. Thank and you for having me. You notice how she's the only one who was called lovely. I'm just going to point that out to everybody. Okay. Yes. She's the only one. So welcome, folks. Welcome. Hope your Monday is off to a good start and hope we can help make the Monday a little, little bit brighter with our discussion. Um, we've been getting a lot of questions about the point rental process from folks. We've got a lot of new viewers and, and followers on our, our, our DVC Fan Facebook group. Oh, and let me not forget to remind everybody that our shows are sponsored by the world of DVC, which includes DVCResaleMarket.com, DVCRentalStore.com, and MoneraFinancial.com. Links to all those down in the show notes right below. And while you're down there, go ahead and hit the like button and go ahead and hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you know when we add new shows to our channel. But as I said, we've been getting a lot of questions lately about, uh, about rentals and uh, we wanted to address some of them. So uh, Paul also put out a call in our Facebook group the DBC fan Facebook group. I'll have a link to that in the show notes as well. Um, so let's start with the first question from Judy DiPrano. Uh, please explain the process of renting out your points with real world examples. I'm overwhelmed just thinking about it. So let me throw this over to you, Carrie. Yeah, it, it's such a good question. And Judy, I hear you. I'm overwhelmed as well with the whole process, but I'm going to hopefully take this and kind of streamline it for you and for everybody. Just as a reminder to everybody, I'm new to this role as well. I was a 20-year Disney cast member, so I feel like we're learning together about DVC rental. And the great thing with the question that you asked Judy about, you know, how do we do this? What is some real world experience that we have. There's so many reasons people rent out their, their DVC points. Um, it could be because of COVID. We have too many points right now. We're not going to use all of them. We haven't traveled for a little bit, so we're going to use some and rent some. Um, it could be you know, that you're saving up for a different trip. So you're not going to come to Disney this year or do any of the Alani's or, or Hilton Head or Vero Beach. One of the best examples that I can give too that I don't think a lot of members remember is that we do pay for your rented point. So if you have a situation like we just did with a lovely lady who called and said, I need to rent out my points quick because I need to pay my dues. I lost my job. I don't want to sell my, my DVC membership. Things will get better. But how can I do this and get some, some money to be able to pay the dues. She was successful in doing that. And so there's many different reasons why people want to rent out their points, but we're seeing right now that that's a little bit of, kind of the top three reasons that we're seeing it. Well, I know that uh, you know folks also know that uh, doing exchanges with TBC for things like Adventures by Disney and cruises and things like that are not a good deal. And what we were always recommend to people, rent out your points. If you're going to go do a cruise, go ahead and rent out your points, take that money and use that to pay for the cruise. That That's a much better, 
a much better deal. Those are real world examples we see all the time, all the time. Yeah, the, every family is going to be a little bit different of why the why behind renting out the points. But you know what I love about the DVC rental store and all of the world of DVC is it's not only one stop shopping, but you're also working with former Disney cast members. Who understand that. So I was a guide, a DVC guide for a few years, um, but I've worked for the company for 20 years. So I understand the team also that I help lead also understands that service and that personalization too of every situation is different. Might not be a happy occasion you're renting out points. It might be a great occasion while you're renting out points. But with, with DVC Rental Store, it's easy it's quick, and I'm sure we'll get into some of the processes in just a little bit too. We try to make it as seamless for you as we can. All right. Well, let's 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 go to one of those questions. Uh, Sherry Sims asks: If you rent your points via DVC Rental Store, and then a person cancels within 30 days, and your points go into holding, does DVC Rental Store prioritize points in holding for requests from customers traveling within 60 days? There's a lot in there's a lot in that question. There's a lot of numbers. There is a lot in that question. And I so, love that question though, Sherry. She dives into so many different different um, scenarios and questions in there. And I'm gonna make it very simple. We don't look at holding or banked or anything like that. If a guest cancels the reservation that the member is using their points for, you really don't have um, anything to worry about as far as now you have to cancel and now you have to issue the refund is what I'm trying to say. Because DVC rental store, if that guest cancels, it's up to us then we will look for somebody else to take that reservation. So you don't have to go and find somebody and put something online or say, now I owe somebody money because this reservation canceled. If they cancel, you still are going to receive the amount of money agreed upon. And then we work on our end to find that person to take that reservation. And most of the time that does happen where we find somebody, sometimes it doesn't happen. And if we don't find somebody, you still are going to get paid out the price per point that was agreed upon. Yeah, that's, that's huge. It's huge. Think about it. Yeah. Think about it for a second. That's a, that's a huge insurance policy. That you're not necessarily going to get everywhere. Um, it's one of the reasons I like working with these guys. Um, they, uh, they, they really, it really is a phenomenal, phenomenal, phenomenal product. Yeah, now, I'm sorry. Go ahead. It's no. Well, there's. Um, it's kind of worry-free. I want to say, in a way, that when you work with with the team and they take in the points, we put it up on the website to say, okay, here's a confirmed reservation. Guests then go to that confirmed reservation and say, okay, that's the one that I want. And we link, we're the intermediary between the guest and the member. So we try to make it as least amount of work for the member as possible with that guarantee that you're not going to lose any money or have to issue a cancellation check or anything like that. All right. So that, that's a good uh, uh, segue into the next question from Lisa Delonzo. Uh, what are your cancellation terms? Can a renter cancel their reservation? If so, how does that affect the owner? Kind of answer that a little bit in the last one. Uh, what happens if, heaven forbid, there is another shutdown? Knock wood. Uh, are renters reimbursed with cash, rescheduled, given a voucher? And again, how are the owners affected? Are they expected to make, is the owner expected to make a refund? That's a great question. And we did touch a little bit on that in the last question too. As a guest, if you have to cancel, you are issued um, not a refund, but more like a voucher or a credit that you'll be able to use two years into when your when your check-in date you know, would have been. So let's say you're gonna check in April 1st um, or December 1st, you'll be issued a credit for two years. But that has nothing to do with the guest. I'm sorry, the member. <laughs> and the <laughs> member's the one who's asking the question. So for the member, for her question, again, you don't owe them anything. So if they do cancel, we would send you an email that just says, unfortunately, the guest did cancel. We'll keep this reservation. We'll keep the points. We'll put it back up and we'll do our best to find you know, somebody to take those points as well. You still, as a member, though, you're going to receive a portion of your payment, 75% at the time of booking 
and then the last 25% on the check-in date. And so you're still going to receiving that. So even if nobody checks into that room, you're still going to receive the 25% that was guaranteed to you when you rented your points or listed your points with DVC Rental Store. Okay. I always like to, when that's brought up, I always like to highlight the fact that, you know, when you're a guest booking a reservation, they're requiring 25% upfront. But you, as the owner, are getting 75% of that money. And that's, that's pretty wild. I mean, that's, yeah. that's, that's crazy unheard of. Um, and, and I know that Carrie, this is all a result of sort of the past year. Um, and uh, maybe we can link to the uh, cancellation policy portion of uh, rental stores website. Um, but it's, it's, it's a very ingenious um, policy that has sort of evolved out of the past year that we've lived through. And in the market, I think it's unheard of as compared to uh, other other companies out there. Yes, I agree with you completely. It's kind of that you said we listened. And coming from, you know, such a Disney background, that is one of the main things that was ingrained in me for 20 years is that listen to the guests. That comes right from Walt Disney. You know, he would go out and listen to what the guests said. I'm so proud that DVC Rental Store, the world of DVC, we did that. Did we get everything right? No. Is it all rainbows and pixie dust all the time? No. There's some misses. But I like to think that when there are misses, there's a good you know, policy behind us to say, okay, this was a miss. We'll make it right. The cancellation policy has been one of the greatest things that we implemented because of COVID to say every point reservation is embedded with a point protection plan. So the guests are protected. The members are protected where that you're not going to have to write a check or issue money to anybody, um, you know, by renting your points with DVC Rental Store. I, I, I want to I, I wanna interject something here. Uh, to that point, um, I was extraordinarily impressed by the adjustments not just the adjustments that were made to the product as a result of what happened uh, with the shutdowns last year, um, but the speed of which those adjustments were made. Um, it's the reason I'm doing business with you. It's the reason you're a sponsor of this show. One of the reasons. Um, because it really said to me, it really showed me in practice what the priorities of the company of your company is, um, and and what your commitment is to your to your guests, um, yeah. and the Thank fact you. that the fact that their brand ambassador will come on this show and say, yeah, we we had some misses. It's not all rainbows and pixie dust, but we're going to work really hard to fix it, and we're going to work really hard to improve the product and change the product to adjust for that. We're going to. We're going to learn from our mistakes. That's a brand ambassador saying that. That kind of honesty and directness, that that talks to me. That talks yeah. to me. So yeah. I, I just want to... It's good to, to... It's good to hear that someone is doing that. Something I mean, just happened just to my finished. lighting. Something happened to your light. No. That was weird. I'm sorry. <laughs> I just... We had a moment. I'm sorry, Paul. Go ahead. No, you're fine. Um, uh we just finished filming a show on bad DVC policies. And so, um, and that's one you'll want to catch if you didn't see it. I don't know if it'll go out before or after this. Well, we'll go, be we'll go before now. Um, so, yeah, but I mean, it's good to hear that other people are thinking about DVC members and what they've gone through and how we can help them. Because DVC is not doing that. Yeah, it's that was a tough show. I'll be honest, but well, but you do need to you do need to listen to it because there's there's so many great little pieces of of wisdom in there too. You know, Nick Cotton, uh, DVC Resale, Tony Adrania from the DVC Rental. You know, when I came in, these processes were were already in place. But what all I brought was that you said we listen. And that's something that Nick as a Disney, former Disney cast member, myself, Marissa, Derek, we have that ingrained in us to be problem solvers and to really come to the table, not just with a complaint or a problem, but to say, 
this is what the guests are saying. This is what's happening that's real out there. I, I love rainbows and pixie dust much more than I love conflict and you know hard decision making. But that's not what has happened. And well, we pride ourselves on trying to you know do the best for our guests to be the number one uh, you know in the industry. You, you you bring up a good point, and in that show, which I'm going to make sure now that that show goes up before this one, so that people have seen it. One of the things I said was it's easy for DVC to say we care about our members. Yeah. But if the policies don't adjust to show that, then it doesn't mean anything. And like I said, I was in pr- – Chris, you made those changes before we started working together. We um, did. And yes. I looked at that and I'm like – you know, because I, 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 I say it all the time. No one will ever advertise on one of my shows. I don't care how much money they want to throw at me if I won't do business with them. If I wouldn't, if I won't put my money with them, I'm not going to ask you to put yours. We're like that with everything. We're like that with every review we do. We like th- that has been the way. I have done this for God in heaven, twenty five, almost twenty five years. Um, <clears throat> And that's been very important to me. Um, so I'm glad I didn't expect this conversation to go this way uh, in the show, but I'm kind of glad it is. It gives me a chance to say it. Um, all right. Let's uh, let's go on to the next one. Um, Heather Parsons asked, well, Heather Par- Parsons asked a couple questions. We'll start with the first one. Um, I think it's worth explaining the difference between rentals, pre-booked rentals, and point transfers? Yeah, that's a great question, Heather. There's really, they're all rentals. Um, The two types of rentals that we work with are open listings and confirmed reservation. So confirmed reservations is a member has a reservation, say December 20th to December 27th, the Grand Floridian in a two bedroom villa, and they're not gonna be able to use those points. So they list it with us and a, a guest comes on and says, oh, I want that. I, w- I want to go ahead and claim that. They go through their our reservation specialist team to confirm that, to get that confirmed reservation. And that's how the transfer kind of goes with the intermediaries. Transfer goes between the member and the guest with us in the middle, handling both sides. The other side is the open listings. And the open listings basically is where guests put on their requests. So my birthday is June 21st. And I want to stay at the Copper Creek cabins or Copper Creek one bedroom for four nights. So me as a guest, I'm going to go on and put that in. The member then comes on and says, oh, I can go ahead and and book that. I have the points for that. And I want to rent out my point. They've agreed to rent their points with DVC Rental Store. And then they can go in and claim that on behalf of the guest as well. So open listings versus confirmed reservations. They're all rentals. It's just a different avenue to get to that booked reservation in that DVC villa. Well, she also has- I hope that all makes sense. It does. She also has the question, if I run out my points, what are my obligations? What work and responsibilities does it involve to have a rental guest? I love that question because- Think of an Airbnb or someplace where you have to go and do the reservation, take the payment, you know, fluff up the pillows or do whatever you want. It's minimal to do with DVC rental, um, but there are some key things. So one of the main things is that you are going to, as the member, be responsible for changing the names on that reservation. Now, I think a few months ago, maybe pre-COVID calling member services was easy to do. Today, it's a little bit of a time-consuming task. Um, But that's one thing that we ask you to do. That's probably the hardest thing. Otherwise, it's really just adding on if they're celebrating something, if they're requesting a a first floor, a top floor, um, anything like that that might be requests that we might ask of the resort, you as the member would then just call member services and do that all at once. That's really it, though. You don't have to do anything else. All right. One last question I want to get to from Rich Farrington. What is the most common number of nights that renters request? Four, five, seven? Any resorts higher in demand than others? Any times of the year higher in demand than others? 
And I would yeah. guess the answer to this, probably similar, you know, the same as for regular DVC members. You know, there are certain resorts that are always popular, always harder to book. Um, and times of year, times of year that are in demand for rentals are the same ones that are in demand for DVC members and for, for, for people booking hotels. Um, but is there anything uh, that you see, Carrie, that, you know, that are more common? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Polynesian is one of the top ones that's the most requested. I would have to say followed by Beach Club and Grand Floridian, if I'm doing a top three uh, for, for locations and resorts. And like you said, Pete, it depends on the time of the year. If you're talking food and wine festival, flower and garden festival, holidays around the world at Epcot, Beach Club, Boardwalk are going to fall probably a little bit higher. If the parties at Magic Kingdom come back, not so scary. And uh, Mickey's very Merry Christmas, Grand Floridian, Polynesian, Bay Lake Tower. Um, the premium resorts is really more in demand um, than Saratoga, which I love Saratoga. I have such a heart for Saratoga Springs. Um, Saratoga Springs, Hilton Head, Vero Beach, they probably don't get as much love as the other ones the do. The resorts of last um, resort. The resort of last resort. Yeah. <laughs> Let's be yeah. honest. I I, yes, I think Saratoga is beautiful. I, I I really do. There's nothing bad about Saratoga. No. It just is not usually folks' first choice. It just isn't. No, it's not. No, not for rental either. Yeah, it's just not. And then as far as the length of stay, uh, for Rich's question, it really just depends. Um, I would say on average, he's right. Between four to seven nights is probably where the average is. So average it out at five, five or six. Yeah. yeah, it's probably a safe bet. Probably a safe bet. So anything else? Anybody else want to throw a question? No. Throw it in? No? All right. All it's right. so new. You know, DVC rental and this whole, you know, sort of segment um, is, is new to, to all of us here. I think it's worth the conversation and worth the questions because, like I said at the beginning, as I learn, we all learn together. And there's so much many, so many benefits uh, to the members and to the guests. You know, try before you buy if you're a guest. And if you're a member and you've got excess of points that you can't use or you need some assistance with your dues, dvcrentalstore.com is a great place to go and to start with that conversation. Well, this is a question I have. Um, when people rent the points through DVC Rental Store, um, is it a common occurrence that they come back from those trips and they're like, okay, I want to buy are you seeing, oh, do yeah. you see that a lot? We do. I don't really have any averages as far as who turns from a rented guest into a, an actual member. Um, but the great thing is that if they're rented with us now as members, they can still rent with us. You're just renting, you're just renting out now and gaining money versus you know, staying at Disney on rented points. But yes, we do have a lot of people who do say, I I'm not quite there with the resale. Let me let me try this a, a little bit, and then they say, "Okay, I see kind of that break even. I've been renting points for three years now, four years now. It's time to become, uh, you know, a DVC member and buy a resale contract." Well, you know, Sean and I are business partners in moving to Orlando.com. We're both realtors, um, and you know, people would love. Oh, I like that house. Let me live there for a week yeah. Yeah. <laughs> before I decide if I want to buy it or not. I mean, yeah. right? So, because kind of that's what rental. Now, for a lot of people, rental is just that. I just want to rent the points and go have a vacation. But for some people, a number of people, yeah, you know, before I go and drop twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars on this contract, let me see what I think. Mm -hmm. Let me rent these points out before I, I sign on the dotted line. I mean, right? Don't you think? Yeah. Don't you think real estate clients would be like? crazy oh yeah, yeah for something like that no they wouldn't and so but uh yeah so and i and i would imagine again you know with resort demand time of year uh length of stay all very similar i can tell you from the dreams unlimited uh travel standpoint you can also book uh your uh the pre-booked mm -hmm. uh dbc vacations through dreams unlimited travel we're going to throw a link in yep. Uh, there, that's oh, those are supplied also by DVCRentalStore.com. Um, but uh, 
you know, our average, our average length of stay is six days. Um, so I think that's probably consistent across, across all products. So, <laughs> but great questions. I'm folks. in the market too, Pete, for a house right now for a new house. And uh, everything I tour, I think, can I just stay here for a day or two or maybe a week and try it? No one's let me do that no, so far. I, yeah. so let me know if you figure out how to do that. Yeah, that would be, that would be, right? right? What, a, what a hook. Yeah. What a hook. Not in this market, okay? No. We're not going to get that. That's not going to happen in this market. But no. if it becomes a buyer's market, maybe. Who knows? Who knows? All right. That's going to do it, folks, for our show this week. Thank you for your questions. Um, and as always, if you have more questions about the rental process, uh, head over to dbcrentalstore.com. Check out their site. A lot of information there. Um, and you can t- check out which, uh, you know, what the, what the process is for uh, renting points. Check out pre-booked reservations, all that good stuff, dbcrentalstore.com. So that'll do it. Thanks very much for being with us. We'll see you again next week with another episode of The DVC Show. Have a great week, folks.